Hi, I'm Katie with the Digital Tattoo Project, where we discuss online presence and digital citizenship and how they affect your digital identity. Today, we will be looking at the different kinds of personalities you will meet across different social media platforms. Think about a time when you first met someone whom you later added as a friend on Facebook. Your first impressions of this person would be based on a wide variety of things, such as speech, hand movements, facial expressions, swag dance moves, etc, etc. Now remember when you added that person on Facebook, it took a good look at his or her profile? For some people, nothing too much was out of the ordinary. For others, things could take an unexpected turn such as, oh wow, really, I didn't think she was like that. Especially when they see something like this. Admit it, without the likes of Facebook and Twitter, your impressions of certain people would be different. But before we really go into why this is, let's take a look at the five prime examples of Facebook personas. Number one, the sports fan. Thanks to this friend, you'll never miss a single bit of news about the Canucks, or the Whitecaps, or the Yellowknife Curling Club. This friend will be sure to keep you in the loop for live updates across multiple social media platforms. Who hasn't read something like, oh my god, that ref was trash, hashtag bribe, hashtag let's light a car on fire. Number two, the animal lover. This friend loves animals. Every other update from them is either a pic of their cat or a YouTube video of a mini pig coming down the stairs. But this friend could lay off the constant updates. You don't want to be known as the Sarah McLaughlin of Facebook. Hi, I'm Sarah McLaughlin. Will you be an angel for a helpless animal? Number three, the partier. This next friend is a weekend connoisseur and YOLO is his mantra. Rave, bar night, sold out concert, birthday party, you name it, your party friend was there. How do we know? Well, the 4 a.m. status updates, excessive rock on photos, and a series of sloppy late night tweets are just a taste of what the partier is capable of. Number four, the activist. Whether they're promoting Coney 2012, blasting politicians, or pushing their vegan lifestyle on the masses, these folks love to share their cause in the name of free speech and humanity. Protesting on the streets? <sighs> Only if there's Wi-Fi. Number five, 007. This friend is severely incognito, sporting a profile picture from 2008 that doesn't even have his face on it, or any kind of face for that matter. The only posts you'll find on this person's wall are year-old happy birthdays. This person's Facebook is a vault of vague mysteries, and legend has it, if you stare at the cover photo long enough, you'll catch a glimpse of a leprechaun sitting on his pot of gold. Where'd it go? Oh right, this friend doesn't even have a cover photo. And the list goes on and on. There's also the philosopher, the self-photographer, the person who thinks Facebook is Twitter, humble bragger, hashtag food porn, etc, etc. Now remember, nobody's personality can be summed up into a one-word adjective. But the world of social media relies heavily on surface impressions. This is why, as users of social media, we must be aware of things that we put up on our profiles. A balance between the different kinds of information and media you post and how often you post them is important in maintaining a good digital identity. As that in turn goes to show that despite your abnormal fascination for Grumpy Cat, you too are involved in other diverse interests and activities. You know, like a real human being. But of course, ideally, the best profile would be one who reflects who you really are as a person. So I guess if you're really not into Grumpy Cat, well, it's all up to you. What personas can you identify among your friends online? Do you think these personas accurately describe their complete, real-life personality? Probably not. Now imagine how your friends see you. How would they judge your profile? Let us know by posting in the comments below. Be sure to check out our blog posts at digitaltattoo.ubc.ca. Thanks for watching.